chapter number two. A very important chapter because it really is a warning chapter as far as I'm concerned. And you folks that uh, are not uh, coming on Wednesday night, I'd encourage you to come this Wednesday night to kind of get uh, some additional information in regards to false teachers and those uh, who would uh, pervert the truth. And we're studying the book of Jude, and uh, we're just down a few verses, and so applicable for our day and time that we're in. And Peter kind of rhymes in with that uh, in his fir very first verse he gives. But we're going to look at verses 1 through 3 tonight. So if you look at verse 1, it says, but there were false prophets also among the people. Read the next three words with me. Even as there, and then he emphasizes, shall be what? False teachers among you. Now watch this. We're in a, a drastic uh, time in regards to the truth. Now, if we were to go back, and we will in just a little bit, uh, in regards to the truth, in the book of 1st and 2nd John, uh, very important principles in regards to the truth and the, and the illustrations that we've been studying uh, on Wednesday night. And they kind of all flow together. They're kind of uh, important uh, building blocks in regards to what we're to be aware of. And by the way, on Wednesday night as we study Jude, Jude is actually the corridor that leads us into the book of Revelation and of course to the, the greatest apostasy and, and abominations that will be uh, prevalent at, at that time uh, during the tribulation period. And so uh, Paul, Peter, and Jude uh, all kind of chime in together to give us a warning and give us some instruction in regards to these individuals we call false teachers. Now, what is the big thing behind false teaching? And why it's going to be even escalated as we move on uh, towards the end times. Uh, Satan knows his time is short. The Bible tells us that. And uh, he's going to do everything he possibly can uh, in behalf of keeping people from getting saved. And he's going to try to keep you as a Christian ignorant of the principles uh, of the Word of God and what you should do in regards to false teaching and so forth. So we have an enlightenment here come from Peter when he says, look, it was prevalent in our day, but it's going to escalate. It's going to get even more so in regards to false teaching. Now, let me give you something tonight. And I want you to listen very carefully. As we go on, and this is going to be very prevalent, I'm not against because we see it in the Bible that we have it. Uh, churches popping up in their homes. Now listen very carefully. That's how the first churches got started in the homes. But we're seeing an escalating on this and what's taking over in those home churches is false teachings. All right? And it's going to be even more prevalent as going. Uh, you, you'll see it. I mean, more people. And what we're doing, uh, what is the biggest thing that a general does an army in order to try to conquer another army? Divide and conquer. That's exactly what the devil's going to try to do. He's going to try to divide the church in every way he possibly can. And one of those avenues he will do it is uh, these individual little ch churches popping up. And I'm not saying they're all wrong, but I, I have found up through the years, the years I've been in the ministry, and I've told you this, uh, once again, 48 years I've been in the ministry, and I'm not darkened or blinded to what's going on because I saw it very prevalent in some other areas when we lived in New Jersey, so forth and so on. False doctrine sneaks into churches, then, but it's, it sneaks in in an unusual way, and then it sneaks in through other avenues, and I believe the devil takes a good thing and makes something bad or wrong or brings, he brings his divisive ways out through it. And I believe this is one of the areas that I'm seeing because I see even this happen, and I'm not against... Uh, 
Tony had a Bible study. Wonderful thing, wonderful thing. But one of the things you got to be careful is you got to be careful that somebody doesn't sneak in and begin to uh, infiltrate that uh, teaching and try to bring in false doctrine. It happens so often in different places. So you got to be careful. I'm not against it. Matter of fact, I think it's a Bible study is a great thing. I, and I kind of disciples people, keeps them going, and gets them more into the Bible and stuff like that. But you got to be extra careful along that line. So Peter comes out here and he says, as it was in our day, he says, it's going to be in your day. Now, look at the next part of the verse. Who privately, or privately, or well, so forth, he says, shall bring in what? Damnable heresies. Things that are contrary to the Bible. And uh, get confusion brought up. And uh, we know, and I put this down because the Bible teaches it, confu confusion is not of God, it's of the devil. Okay? So, what he's going to do, he's going to hit this matter of doctrine. Now, folks, the first thing, when you hear somebody say, doctrine is not important, that's a lie from the devil. Doctrine is the very core of the Bible. Doctrine. And we know what doctrine is, for example, in case you don't know. Doctrine, for example, the doctrine of the deity of Jesus Christ. And we're going to be talking more about that in just a few minutes. The doctrine of the new birth. The doctrine of the church. The doctrine of eternal security. And we can go on down the line. Uh, the, the Trinity, so forth and so on. Now, we never find the word Trinity in the Bible, but it's very, very much expressed. Matter of fact, we'll look at it in just a little bit in 1 John chapter 5. So, uh, the devil is going to try to do everything he can to divide and take away from the Word of God. Let me ask you a question. Has he changed in his nephrous ways? Come on, talk with me. No. He's going to do the same thing that he did with Adam and Eve. He's going to try to deceive him. Deception is on the upward go. I mean, he's doing everything he possibly can to, de uh, to be deceptive to you and me. So, he's going to bring in damnable heresies. And the thing that comes out right out about even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. So, uh, one of the predominant things, and we see it really uh, escalating today, is the denial of the deity of Jesus Christ. All right? Denying the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, as far as who he is. And Jesus said this, and listen very carefully. He says, if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Amen. That is an awesome warning. If we do not believe, that is he. Uh, what is it? Well, go back to John 1, 14. The word was made what? flesh and dwelled among us. And we beheld his what? Glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And then Paul comes along there in the book of Ephesians and talks about the fact uh, of his deity and what he did as far as come to this earth. And uh, you can read about it if you want to go back there, verses 5 through 8, and read about uh, uh, the pronouncement that he gave in regards to Christ. Now, look back at verse number th uh, 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. All right? The very truth will be evil spoken of. Look at verse number three. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words, and we'll talk about that, make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. How many of you here tonight are familiar with the antique road show? Raise your hand. Okay. There they, they look at all kinds of antiques. And many times, my wife and I, we, we kind of like that show. Uh, uh, they, uh, they'll, they'll see fakes. Uh, they'll fee, see replicas of the thing that are not the real McCoy, so to speak. There's another show on there. They, there's uh, some men that have antiques, and uh, they're, uh, they're on there, and they'll bring in, uh, people will bring in different uh, so-called antiques or whatever it might be that uh, of the past that will, uh, they, they have to classify to see if they're really real. And on many occasions, they're not. They're fakes. Uh, they're, uh, you know, duplicates or whatever it might be. And the person 
person might have paid thousands of dollars and they come to find out they have something that might be worth a hundred. Okay? So we find that all around us. Uh, how many of you have ever gone to places, and this was really rampant some years ago, that somebody, uh, whether it be a foreign country or what, they were duplicating the Air Jordan shoes. Did you see that? And you'll see duplicates of things. If you go, like, for example, to flea markets, uh, you'll see sometimes uh, gym shoes duplicated, so to speak. And the, people buy those things. Uh, watches. You'll find that um, uh, they'll duplicate some watches. They're supposed to be very expensive, but they're not. Or you see these guys go around and they open up their jackets like that and they got, you know, watches hanging down both sides or whatever it might be. And they're trying to sell those, pawn those things off on you. Why? Because of the fact most people are very vulnerable to things like that. And so they'll buy them. And so they're fake. Uh, whether it be fake art, whether it be fake uh, jewelry, so forth and so on. And they don't have the value. Well, that's why it is with false teachers. They seem to present the real thing. And it sounds good. I mean, it sounds real good. But when you place it side by side with the Word of God, you find out very quickly that it's a false teaching. It's wrong. It's ungodly. And so uh, Peter here, as well as Jude and Paul, really came across in regards to the fact of, listen, you got to be very careful in regards to the devil's duplication. Why do you think in the book of Revelation we have what we call the Antichrist? He's not the true Christ, but he presents himself as it. And he can perform miracles. He can do everything else just like Christ. But he's not the real thing. See, he's a false individual. Uh, matter of fact, turn back to the book of 2 Corinthians, would you please? That talks about the fact of um, uh, Satan being the great imitator. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. <clears throat> Excuse me. And look down at verse number 13. All right, we're going to read verses 13 through 15. Would you read with me out loud? Here we go. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. All right? For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Uh, very quickly, turn over to the book of uh, Galatians. I'm trying to find a verse. This just came in my mind. Maybe I got the wrong place there, but I think it is. Uh, somebody help me. My mind just went blank. Uh, it's where Paul said, um, maybe it's Galatians chapter 1. Yes, turn back to Galatians 1. Look at verse number 6. He says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, read verse number 8 and 9 with me, would you please? Here we go. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we've preached, Unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Time after time, the people of Israel were deceived, so easily deceived. I mean, they had seen the miracles. They had seen all the things that God had done, but they were so easily turned aside after false gods. They were deceived. The devil is a master of deception. Now, turn back to 2 Peter. Peter is saying, look, don't think it'd be a strange thing. And the devil, uh, he's not going to give up that which he is a master of. If he did it back then, guess what? He's going to do it again. And of course, that uh, repetition is run all the way from the book of Genesis, all the way through the book of Revelation. And you and I are going to be faced with it more as time goes on. So, what does Peter 
trying to get across to you and me in these three verses uh, here tonight about fake or false teachers. All right, look at verse number one. Number one, they're false teachers. Right off the bat, we have to get that in our thinking. They are false teachers. Don't forget that. Matter of fact, we've got to be very careful about them letting them into our homes. You've got to be careful because you'll get sucked in to a false doctrine or false teachings of some sort. And so the first thing is you've got to recognize they're false teachers. These are all carried on by Satan as he counterfeits the very things of God. I mean, look at it. Look at all the duplications or uh, so-called uh, uh, religions that have a Bible and the teachings they have in them. And that are so contradictory to what the Bible has to say. We've got to be careful, folks, that we do not take and get caught up in something that would be a false teacher. And let me say this to you. The devil is pretty persuasive. Can I hear an amen? amen. Now think about this. If Adam and Eve, who walked and talked with God day by day, were pulled aside by what the devil had to say and he tricked them in, to doing contrarywise what God had given in regards to the forbidden fruit, do you think that you are exempt? Huh? No way. How many people have gotten pulled into those different philosophies and teachings when they didn't listen to what the Word of God says? Because they're counterfeits. Now, as I said before, the devil is the chief behind deception. And he's going to have the best they're going to confront you and me in regards to areas. Number one, I want you to get this. He has fake Christians all over the world. Fake Christians. I hope we don't have anybody in here like that tonight, because if you are, you can go ahead and walk out the door. Fake Christians. They truly have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. They simply have come in to be deceptive. Look back at verse 1 again. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who probably shall bring in damnable heresies. Uh, take your Bible. We're going to do a little bit of uh, research here tonight. Take your Bible and turn over to the book of Matthew, chapter 13. And look down at verse number 38. All right, he gives us the illustration here of a mystery about uh, the planting of, uh, of crops and so forth. And he uses here in verse number 38, the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked. In other words, these tares, they look just like the real thing, but they are not. They are that which is completely worthless. And they're evil. They're wicked. And so Paul says, look, uh, you got to be careful about this. Peter says, look, you got to be careful about this. Then here comes Matthew and he says, you got to be careful about this. Because they're going to try to come in. They're fake. There's no substance to them. And we'll see that when we get, go over to the book of Jude in a reference in a few minutes. Look, turn, uh, you're in Matthew. Turn to John chapter 8. And look down at verse number 44. John chapter 8, verse 44. You say, Preacher, I'll never be deceived. Look out. Look out. About the time you say that, the devil's going to send somebody down your path. And you're going to get deceived. Uh, look at uh, John chapter 8 and verse 44. It says, he says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh the lie, he speaketh of his own, for he's a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. They will not believe the truth. Listen, the other day I had some individuals and they came and I turned over there to the book of John chapter 1 and verse 14 and they rejected it. 
I said, in other words, you don't believe that Jesus, uh, that Jesus God, in a man, has come in the flesh. And they said, no. And I took their own Bible and showed them. And they still wouldn't believe it. They're blinded lest the glorious gospel of Christ should shine unto them, and they'd be what? They'd be saved. You see, if you get the true gospel and you believe it, you get saved. But you can't get saved, get saved when you believe a false gospel. All right. Secondly, he is a fake gospel. Now, that was Saul, and I'm, uh, I have seen back in Galatians chapter 1. I'm not going to go back and reiterate what I read to you. But he says, if you bring any other gospel than that which you have received, let them be a curse. So there are fake gospels. Thirdly, the devil and his cohorts and those who are work with him as false teachers, they bring in a false righteousness. Take your Bible and turn over to the book of Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9 and look down at verse number 30. All right, it says, what shall we say, uh, what shall we say then, that the, the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel which followed after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for the, they stumbled at that stumbling stone. In other words, Here's a, a false righteousness. People believe that they are righteous, and they're not. Because, number one, righteousness does not come by keeping something. It's receiving righteousness through Jesus Christ. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have righteousness through Jesus Christ. So, we, there is a false righteousness. Look over chapter 10 and verse 4, just uh, over the other page. It says, For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness to everyone that does what? Believeth. All right? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation, Paul said here in Romans chapter number 10. So, we can't get righteousness by the law or by doing certain things. We get righteousness by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. So, we're offered a fake righteousness. One day, he will offer a fake Christ. And I want you to turn over to the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians, chapter number 2. I'll get there in a minute. My page is sticking together here. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall come, except there come a fallen away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember you not that when I was with yet with you, I told you these things. Now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Now listen very carefully. If the mystery of iniquity was working back in Paul's day, how much more so even today? And he goes on to say, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now left letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him, listen, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Read verse number 10 with me out loud. Everyone together. 
and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Now look at verse 11 and 12. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a what? Who was a liar in the beginning? The devil. All right, now listen to verse number 12. That they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in what? In unrighteousness. Be careful. The false teachers, the false teachers you and I will face today. Look there. Peter called what these false teachers taught heresy. Heresy. That is something that's destructive to our lives because it's not the truth. The word heresy originally meant to make a choice. But here in these, this verse of and 2 Peter, if you turn back there very quickly, the word heresy there came to mean sect or party, a particular group. And we've got to be careful that we do not get involved in that which would not teach the truth, but teach heresy, that which is completely contrary to Scripture. Oh, it sounds good, but the end results here are our destruction. Uh, matter of fact, we're going to look in Galatians in a minute. Uh, Dr. Warren Wearsley stated this, Promoting a spirit in a church is one of the works of the flesh. Promoting a spirit... In other words, a spirit that is contrary to the Word of God. It's not the Spirit of God. It's a wrong spirit. Uh, turn back to Galatians chapter 5. Look down at verse number 19. Now I'll give you the point I'm really trying to drive home here. Listen very carefully. Look at verse 19. Matter of fact, let's jump back up to verse 17. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one uh, to the other. So that you cannot do the same things that you would. Uh, you cannot do the things that you would. Excuse me. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are what? Manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, barrenness, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and say the last word. Heresies, all right? They're of the flesh. Now, if they're of the flesh... They're not of God because they're not of the Spirit of God because Galatians there tells us if we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the what? The flesh. Okay? Now, here's a point I'm getting to. Be careful about any institution or group, whatever it might be, that promotes to do anything you want to do. And it's okay. And if it's fleshly, worldly, devilish, guess what? It's not of God. Can I hear an amen? amen. We got to be careful. You see, a lot of things are going on today. I see as promoting fleshly will and desires. It's lasciviousness. It's ungodly. And we could go on and on. But we're going to have false teachers that we're going to face. And we've got to be careful. They come in, you've, and you've heard this uh, uh, probably for years, if you've been in church. They come in sheets clothing. They're not the real McCoy. And they look like it. They sound like it. But in teaching and doctrine, they show that they're not in conjunction or parallel with what the Bible has to say. That's the reason you need to learn your Bible. You need to have your defense in the Word of God. Not only was their message false, but their methods are false. They're fleshly, they're worldly, and they're devilish. So you've got to be careful about that. And we have that rampant, may I insert this, in the churches of America around this world today. We're promoting a fleshly will and desire. I talked to a guy the other day. 
And he was saying, well, we just, uh, in our church services, in our house, <clears throat> in our house, uh, we just choose when we want to worship. Hello? I believe the Bible teaches us this is the Lord's day that we should worship on. Have you noticed a lot of churches go on to other days to substitute for the Lord's day? I believe we've got to be careful who we're following. God wants us to follow his pattern. God gave, for example, I'll say this right out tonight. Mr. Moody and even Spurgeon were wrong when they called Sunday the Sabbath. This is the Lord's Day. Sunday is the Lord's Day, the first day of the week. Am I right or wrong? It's Sunday he gave us to worship on as a new beginning. Uh, by the way, do you know this? Sabbath was never a worship day. The Sabbath was a rest day. Sabbath means rest or cessation. The people of Israel worshiped God every day. Okay? But the Sabbath was a day they would not work. They would not work. It was a time of cessation or rest. God gave us the perfect rest on the Sunday, the Lord's Day. All right? So, we've got to be careful about that. And so they bring in these damnable heresies. Look there, once again, back in 2 Peter, and look at verse number 1. Uh, bringing in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, or bring them upon themselves, swift destruction. And many shall follow their, what? Pernicious ways. Now, what is the problem? Well, the first thing here we see, they deny the Lord. You're in the book of 2 Peter very quickly. Turn back, uh, turn and make a right turn out of 2 Peter. Go to 1 John chapter 5. And look down at verse number 4 if you would. All right? If you're there, look at verse 5. Who is he that come, overcometh the world, but he that believes that Jesus is what? The Son of God. All right? Verse number 6. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word. Who's the Word? Jesus. Jesus. You go back to John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Not a God, was God. All right? Uh, you can't, that's not, uh, in the Greek, you cannot, you cannot take in, in the structure, you cannot put an article in there. Okay, I'm not going to go into all that tonight. Okay, uh, it goes on to say, uh, uh, verse 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. There's your trinity right there. All right? And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is what? Greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on, uh, on the Son of God hath a witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. So the first thing they're going to deny is the Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, they deny the truth. They deny the truth. Now, uh, we're not going to go into it tonight, but if you go back to uh, uh, the book of John, uh, Third John, it, it, it emphasizes about the truth. And we talked about that on Wednesday night. So if you want those notes, you need to go back uh, to YouTube and listen to the message, or uh, I'll be glad to give you the notes on that if you want them. But the truth. And in John 8, 44, it says this. Are you listening? Year of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you would do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the what? The truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks of life, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So, 
we got to be very careful about these damnable heresies the devil's going to bring in. We could go into a lot more detail tonight, but that's not the objective of this. Look back at 2 Peter chapter number 2 and look at verse number 3. Let me give you a fourth point. Their deceptive ways. Now I'm going to step on some toes. Look at it. And through, say the next word with me, covetousness. Does that hit a note anywhere? Covetousness? Some of these religions or denominations that just want this. Now, let me make it clear. I believe a Christian ought to be a tither and a giver. Don't get me wrong there. But false teachers will make merchandise of you through their covetousness. Be careful. They're all around. And we've got to be careful about that area. All they're out for is, is your money and your possessions. Be careful of that type of teacher or that type of leader. So the first thing Peter says, And through covenants shall they with feign words make merchandise of you. In other words, for their own gain. Now what's the word feign mean here? The word feign here means, and it comes from the word plastos, which we get our word plastic. And the emphasis is, you can take plastic and you can turn it and bend it any way you want to bend it. They will say words that are not really in yours and my dictionary. They have their own meanings. So when you go up to a person and, and they say, I'm saved, that doesn't mean necessarily they mean the same thing you mean in regards to salvation. Because when you get right down to it, when did you trust Jesus Christ as, my savior, as your Savior? And then they begin to go off on these other tangents. See, you see, you've got to be very careful about this matter because they will be making merchandise of you with their fame words. In other words, their words just to pull you in, to get you uh, sucked into their system, into their teachings, and then they will take full possession of your life. So we've got to be careful about that. So, what's the end result of these people? Because, folks, God will have the final say. Can I hear an amen? Look at verse number 3. He says, And through covenants shall they uh, with fame words make merchandise of you, whose judgment of now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. In other words, God says, Look, they're going to have destruction. They're on their way. Folks, just like the devil, he thought everything was going to be all right because he said, I'll exalt myself above God. I, become, I will become like the Most High. What happened to him? He got thrown out. I mean, God dealt with him. But the ultimate is not the, lake, uh, not the bottomless pit, but the lake of fire. And the Bible tells us that in the book of Revelation. He will be cast in the lake of fire and already his demons will be there. They will be put in there previously. You'll read about that in the book of Revelation. And the false prophets, so forth and so on, will be there. Their destruction is sure. So you better make sure who you're following. Because if you don't know the Lord, you're liable to end up in the same place, the lake of fire with the devil. Uh, matter of fact, turn over to Revelation chapter 20, would you please? And let's, uh, it talks about the great white throne here in verse 11 down through verse 15. But I want you to look at verse number 13. We'll begin reading with. It says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now read verse 15 with me. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I want to ask you a question tonight. Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Are you written in there? Do you know that you're saved? Now, to close with tonight, you're in Revelation. Turn back to the book of Jude very quickly. And look at verse number 19. 
keep in mind that these apostate teachers are not innocently ignorant of the Word of God. They know what they're doing. They know because of the pernicious ways. They know they, uh, they have been foreordained, so to speak, after they reject uh, God's word and God's way, and they're delivered into uh, this destruction. Uh, look at verse number 19 there in uh, Jude, if you would please. And I want you to read it out uh, loud with me. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. And folks, he says, if you have not the Spirit, you're not one of His. The Holy Spirit comes to live within your life today. You invite Jesus Christ to be your personal Savior from your heart. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, according to Romans chapter 10 and verse number 9. God says, look, we got to be careful. we got to not believe every person who comes down the road is teaching the truth. That's the reason the Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Your only defense, folks, is knowing the word of God. Because the devil never can or out do or win over the Word of God. And we saw that in the book of Matthew chapter 4 when Jesus was there in the wilderness and three times, which is all the scope of temptation that could be given against the, Jesus as well as you and me. And each time Jesus defeated him with one thing, the Word of God. That's going to, going to keep you from falling into false teaching. It's going to help you as an individual. If you're here and you're not saved, the only thing that's going to keep you from false teaching and it's going to bring you to the cross and you kneel at the cross and you accept Jesus Christ as Savior is the Word of God and what God says in regards to your life and what Jesus did for you and what you can do about being saved. So I want to ask you tonight, what are you depending upon to get you to heaven? If you're not dependent upon the shed of the blood of Jesus Christ, my friend, the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no what? Payment for sin. So if you're here tonight, you have never been saved, or you're watching by means of the internet, and you've never been saved, you better check up on to see what you're going to trust in in order to be saved. And if you're trusting in your own self, or you're trusting in some church, or you're trusting in something you've done, remember, it's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His tender mercies, He saved us because of that shed blood. Are you saved tonight? Christian, are you studying God's Word to keep you from the false teachings? Are you letting God control your life by His Holy Spirit? Remember this, Galatians 5.16. I want you to say it with me. Galatians 5.16. Walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh because all false teaching will lead you to live and walk in a fleshly nature and a fleshly walk of the world. Remember, we have three enemies. The world, the flesh, and the devil. They're the evil trinity. Rather than serving God, through the person of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we'll be serving that which of an evil nature, that of false teachers. Would you bow your head and close your eyes with me, please? With heads bowed and eyes closed. God wants you to be alert of the Bible doctrines and the principles of God's Word so you won't be caught up into some pernicious way or false teachings. But I want to ask you tonight, with heads bowed and eyes closed, dear friend, have you personally put your faith and trust only in what Jesus did upon the cross? Are you trusting him fully that he died for your sins? According to the scriptures, they was buried and he rose again the third day. Do you believe that he is the son of God? And he is the one who came to pay the price for your sins. If you have not, I encourage you here tonight to take the opportunity right now, right there in the quietness of your heart, to call upon the Lord and simply admit to him that you're a sinner. And that only the death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection can justify you and make you right between you and God and save your soul, make you be born again. And then thank him for saving your soul. Thank him 
for the fact that you have a place in heaven now. I trust you if you will pray that prayer, God will save you tonight. Christian, are you taking lightly the matter of false teachings that could sneak into your life? Not only your life, but how about your children's lives? Teach them the Word of God. That they'll hide God's Word in their hearts that they wouldn't sin against God. And they'll not be easily deceived by these false teachers that are coming down the road, even in a greater way today than they ever have been before. Would you stand with me with heads bowed and eyes closed? And let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, I pray now that you take your word tonight, these three simple verses that we've read. And I pray that we might get the full message of what the Holy Spirit can drive home to our hearts, that we would not be caught up in that which we might be taught over the TV or that we might be taught by the radio or maybe somebody that would come in and begin to have a Bible study with us that would teach us false doctrine and take our uh, minds away from the truth because as we've often said from your word if you know the truth the truth shall make you free so Lord I pray you would do your work here tonight speak to each one of us here and we'll thank you for it in Jesus name Amen. In just a few seconds, we're going to have a song of...